shooting and you know what's going on but boyhood was really fascinating and different than I mean, we've been working together since 1992 i don't know how many projects have we done together can we put a count on 19 19 wow. things we've done together um first movie we did together was dazing and fuse back in 92 and uh everything said, yeah. but boyhood was so different because Rarely does a film, I mean, usually, you know, filmmaking has distinct periods. You know, you have like conception, writing, production, and then editing. But on Boyhood, because of the nature of it, it was 12, um, you know, films in a way. And we edited for 12 years, you know, over that time period. It was, it was a different way to work. And it was really rewarding to be able to watch a couple years and then sit in the editing room and talk. Rarely, you know, usually... Our relationship is after the fact. We've already shot, largely, and it's how to make the film work based on the material that's there. This time, Sandra could participate in, I remember just having long conversations about how what's working, what isn't, is this thing, is this thread working? What does the film need? You know, and every year we got that extra, we got that year to kind of think about it. So it was a totally unique process. And, so uh, really, really rewarding. You know, I wish we could do it every film, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, after this length of time and the number of films that we've worked on together, I think that Rick and I ha have a shorthand, obviously, that you don't have with a director that you work with one time. Yeah. I have a pretty clear understanding of Rick's style and the way that he shoots. And we have a way of working together in the room that's pretty efficient, I would say. So we don't have to learn about each other. We kind of know what we're doing. And when he comes into the room, it's all been. And that, what Sandra just said, like getting to know each other, that takes a couple of films at least to um, get each other's rhythms. And I think it's trust too. I'd never worked with an editor really before. I'd always edited, but it was the first studio film. Sandra just moved back to Austin and we met and she had credits and seemed like a real editor. I was always just like, wow. But then I was also, you know, especially as a young filmmaker making this first studio, I was a little paranoid. Even though she was clearly on my side, she wasn't working with the studio. I still thought, okay, who, who's going to, like, you're just paranoid. Someone's going to screw up your movie. So I was just kind of over the shoulder. All I can describe, I think I was here that whole movie. Or less and less, but I remember one time Xander turned around and go, you know, there's other directors can leave and come back. And I was like, you know, like, but every film I would describe a relationship as me getting farther and farther in the best way, and that's just trust, you know? Like, Sandra's first... You know, we might circle a few takes. Her choice is going to be the right one. Her, like, I, I just say we share the same post production brain, you know, at this point. I mean, for example, the film we're working on now, we shot a film this fall, and we're in the editing room. I had given like you know, four days of notes or something. We have a long assembly. And then a day ago, I just come in based on one note session came back and it was a, it's a mess you know it's a long it's everything everything's there it's a little depressing when you see a film you know because it's just pretty far from what the final film's going to be one note session i go back in the editing room we watch like the first hour of the movie and i came out floating it was like the movie's so close to what how i envisioned it and that's her in one you know i've been you know just in one next pass it's also getting really good notes <laughs> i mean yeah. rick has such a keen understanding of what it is he envisions and he's so it's so easy for him to communicate to me what it is he's envisioned and you know i just take handwritten notes and um over us but it's for me editing is such an intuitive process it really, it's not something that I plot out, really. It's what feels right. And to me, that's what editing really is. And that scene specifically is about 
a man essentially terrifying the entire family. And not just Deller, not just Mason, not just the mom, but the all the kids they're they're feeling the attention in the room and you know, he kind of picks on everybody in that scene. So it just it, it's almost impossible for me to say why I cut when I cut to each shot, but it's really because it feels right. And I have a, I have a standard kind of like what I have in my mind specifically, and then in my mind, it, it, it's up to Sandra to top that. You know, that's like a good collaboration. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Like that, oh, that's the perfect time to cut that. Well, good, you just exceeded my own. So that's what a good collaboration is. So when you go farther than you could have gone to, you know, you push each other. You know. And then if it's not there, it's, then I'll have a suggestion of like, well, did you try, you know, whatever. So it's just, it's just kind of a methodical process. We, we, the first year we shot, which I went way over it, when I first thought of this movie, I thought, oh, we'll shoot about 10 minutes a year, 12 years, an hour and two, you know, two hour movie. <laughs> well, the first year clocked in about 23 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that's just to get everything in. To, and, and it was probably the least, I think it was appropriate that we spent 12 years thinking about the first year, because it, it probably needed the most work. And even years 11 and 12, we were still kind of going back to that first year. So it's an incredible luxury that you just don't get in what we do to go back and Pick something from 11 years before that you're still thinking about or pacing or, you know, year seven, we look at each other. Do we need that scene? <laughs> I mean, we've been polishing this thing for seven years. Let's try it without it. Maybe we don't need that. And then, ah, don't miss it. You know, and then there are other things it's like, you know, eight years later, you go, I kind of do miss that way. You know, put something back. Uh, we did continually refine it and, and work on finding the just the exact right pieces of the kids and all of that did get refined and refined. But also it occurred to me that year one really sets the pace of the film. And I felt strongly that if we could get the film off to the, on the right foot and with the right kind of pacing, that it would um, allow us to continue that for the, and the film does kind of, slow down because Mason's character becomes more complex and we talk about our lot has spoken about the uh, transitions between the years which are very important we had a transition between years one and two that we cut in year 11 yeah it was just it was the first transition I filmed and I was a little I got better at it you know at first it was kind of a clever idea like they moved into a new apartment and when they drive up and then He's going to school the next day. There was actually a scene in between there where they walk into an empty apartment. Oh, go see your room. You know, he runs down the hall. He comes through the door, and it's a year later. His hair's a little different. The room's decorated. He's getting ready for school. So it, it worked. Technically, it was kind of exciting. But it always sort of bugged, you know. So I like, ah, it's too on the nose, too clever in a way. Got more subtle. And that's a great example of, like, learning as we went. It's like... It seemed an obvious choice, and I was trying to avoid those, but sometimes you can't help yourself. It's just the idea you have in your head. You haven't refined it. So, um, But it still took over a decade to say, even just like, we don't even need, what if we just, because we've gotten more subtle with those. So what's there now is matches kind of the subtlety of some of the other transitions. We just didn't have it there. So that's one of the, one of the scenes we didn't just took Didn't we actually completely. take out another shot when they run into their bedrooms? Like we had him come into the apartment. Yeah, and then we, that's the one. That's yeah. The one. Yeah. yeah, that transition is gone, and now they just pull up outside, and then we're in the bedroom. Yeah. So, but it was many years later. This so. question, yes, very autobiographical. Um, but I wasn't too worried about that because um, it's a new era. It's, you know, it's not set in the time when I grew up. So it's, the architecture of it is very much kind of my own. It's a lot about my mom. But the nature of the design of this movie, it, it became about Patricia's mom and Ethan's mom and Patricia as a mom and Ethan and I's parents. So it was very collaborative. To me, that was the best of both worlds. It, intensely personal and yet open for, so I kind of, I sort of worked that way quite a bit. And to the next point about the dialogue, 
it was, you never turn on a camera and just see what happens. You know, it's always very conceptualized and very um, scripted. Sometimes at the last minute, like to me, the exact dialogue, I don't mind out. I mean, if you know what the scene's about, you know where you're going, you know everything around it. It's more like the structure to me is sometimes more important. So some scenes are a little more written than others, but by the time we're shooting, and this might be the night before, you know, I've been talking on, on the phone with Patricia for a few months. We've been kind of working on this year's bit, and then she flies in, gets in at nine at night. We're shooting the next day. We'll be in her hotel room with Eller, you know, all night working on some scenes and kind of really getting the dialogue exact. And so when we show up on set, we have that scene. Like the scene at the very end between Patricia and Ethan where he tells her, hey, you did a great job with him. Night before, we just knew when they came when they came in, we just knew, you know, we need a scene of them together. It's been a long time since we've seen them alone together, you know, since never really, the, the beginning of the film, year two. So it's like, yeah, the film needs that. And so we just sat around on my porch and kind of worked that up that night. But the dialogue, I always say like the last shot of the movie, I knew the last shot maybe so many years before, 10 years before, but the exact dialogue, 10 hours before. <laughs> and that, that works perfect. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a little kid and there's some adult wigging out around you, it takes a lot to like stand up and right. take them on. Right. Yeah. You're often like, have you ever seen a, a mouse when this, they drop it in a snake aquarium or something? It's just trying to hide, trying not to make eye contact. And like, don't focus on me. Get your shit out of the way. And like, you know, so that was kind of my take on that. Even Patricia, I think, is, are you talking about her? Because in real life, she's like, she would, you know, stick a fork in that guy's eye <laughs> if he threatened her kids. But we really thought about that a lot, how this strong woman can occasionally show weakness and just there's a passivity that we're all capable of at certain moments that it's just emotional and it's trying to just get out. You know, it's like having to avoid a fight or take, you know, like how do you go? Sometimes you don't. It's, it's a complex emotional situation. And, I am, um, Patricia and I talk about stuff like that a lot. You know, it's like, well, what's the right, what do we do there? I don't think there's any one right way when you're like that. Question, I think the story was, it wasn't, it was gonna be an exploration of growing up and parenting and life through these, this, this era from 2002 to when we finished. So I thought it would reflect that. It, it didn't have a huge agenda, I'll say. Most stories, you could try to tell a story. I knew the architecture. I knew it ended with him going off to college. I knew the mom would get remarried a couple times and end up alone sitting at a table. I mean, we kind of, it was all there. But I don't think it, it didn't really, on one level, it didn't change that much. And yet, it, it became something else, too. If that's possible to be, to say that. Like, it, it is the story we set out to tell, but yet it was kind of unpredictable. So I'm like, everything on this movie had some kind of life analogy. You know, it's kind of like your life. Do you know where you'll be 12 years from now? Probably not, but you kind of have a way you're heading, maybe, depending on your age and what, you, you know. So you just have faith that the future will be there. And you will be, you know, making decisions within it. And you follow your instincts that take you to that place. But you can't totally predict. So the whole film felt like life. You know, you're aiming somewhere specific. A lot of people, we strive in this life. You know, you go through the educational system, you get your advanced degree, you become a whatever, and then you kind of go there like, how did I get it? Well, I aimed here and I got here, but is this what, you know, just, that's kind of how this film that we aimed here, we got there, but are you still the same person? How did you get there? Are you, you know, what does it mean? <laughs> Who are you? You know, that, that can all fit in there somewhere. So. Yes. Do you ever remember that? Because <laughs> I, I, I know, panicked and then I've never so. seen Rick second guess himself. And I've never <laughs> felt for a second that he ever lived in a place of doubt about the yeah. film. If he I was just a total optimist about. Yeah, that's why this film's that. optimistic because you say, A, we're going to be here 12 years from now. Uh, <laughs> B, it'll have been worthwhile. <laughs> that maybe this will, you know, so. 
Um, but if I ever had any doubts, I'll be honest, I had some fleeting thoughts a few years in, like, is this enough? It's such intimate stuff. We always joke, it's all the little bits that would get cut out of most movies. Huh. They don't advance a narrative. They're not enough character. You know, it's that kind of it's thing. It's a slice of life. Yeah, so it, we're on ve delicate ground, really. Um, so sometimes I thought it, it crossed my mind. I never said it out loud, but I was like, gosh, it's going to be enough. You know, is it, is it, should I be bigger? Should it be? I have this opportunity with such a big 12 year canvas. Maybe we should be telling a bigger story, you know, because it's endless. You think about it, but I always bet everything on the property of cinema itself, this accumulation of time, the way we watch film, the way we identify. I really felt if we were honest, you know, with the film we were making that you would believe it and it, you would go with these, you care about these people. You know, in, in some ways. So it's it's a it's a weird it's a lot of it's a contradiction because it's an epic, but it's it's an intimate. Most epics have epic subject matter. You know, Lawrence of Arabia. This is like 2001. They're about big things. This is an epic about little things. So I don't know. It's just, that's what it is. It was always the end. Yeah, it, it ended when he went off to college. So it was just how much college. And I just wanted to get a taste of his new life away from family and the instant, you know, everything he, that come before. So you just needed a hint. But then to the idea of kind of going through his high school heartbreak. We talked about this in the editing room, you know, like, I don't remember saying it, but I think he needs to, where's this relationship? You know, I think he needs to get his heart broke. Like, yeah, who doesn't get crushed, you know, as a teenager? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sandra kind of pushing me in that direction a little bit. I was like, yeah, who does? Poor guy. But then the whole the life goes on. You're going to meet new people. Your life, you can tell someone who's suffering as a 17, 18 year old, and they, it doesn't help to say, trust me, you know, it'll, you know, in the moment it sucks. But uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank just you. Just to see it and then know, okay, life goes on. It'll be fine. Some people oh. have said, oh, there's probably a six hour version. No. <laughs> <laughs> we shot like three days a year usually. Oh, wow. four, and so it, that 15 minutes was pretty yeah. intense, 16, whatever per year. It, was, it wasn't was a lot. I don't, I don't think there's a handful of scenes. We've described a couple of them here tonight that we cut out. There's not a whole lot of scenes. There's parts of scenes, yeah. little, little beginnings or but endings of scenes, little yeah, in the middle of the scene. Typical pacing. But... Oh, we don't need that part. Yeah, but there's not a lot of entire scenes going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe five, yeah, six. Five that are just a minute long scene that's gone, or two minutes. Not very many. Not very many. It was that kind of. Well, the twelve years. You know, you talk about homework and school. The twelve years came from the twelve years of the public education. People say, "Oh, could it have been thirteen or seven? Did you ever?" Like, no. One through twelve. That's what. That's what. They, I remember being in first grade when I realized, you know, like, oh hell, I got twelve, eleven more years. Before I, oh, normally that's like a yeah. sentence. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. better yeah. pace yeah. myself. You know, it's like. But I thought on the other side of that was freedom, or something, a new level where you, you would be your own person or something. So that's where that twelve grid. Will there be a secret? It had everything to do with education. And I think I the movie that. talks a lot about that. The fact that she's an educator. Yes. You know, that, yeah. That's very important. Well, thank you to Sandra and Greg. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Yeah, take it. Well, get your take yeah. with you. Sure. It's on video.